What's up YouTube, Mike here from Techno GI, and today I finally wanted to do my review of the iPad Pro 10.5 inch model. So let's take a look at it. All right, so I've had the iPad Pro 10.5 inch model now for almost three weeks. And I gotta say, by far, performance wise is the best iPad you can get. Obviously, if you get the 12.9 inch, model the performance is going to be the same so uh, whether you want a bigger screen or a smaller screen it's really the only difference between these this and the 12.9 inch model but i will say performance wise this thing is a beast it's awesome i mean it's got four gigs of ram in the thing so it's as powerful as most ultra books and pretty much it performs better on the benchmarks than the actual 12 inch macbook so pretty impressive stuff so if you are looking to get an ipad or upgrade i would definitely go for this like i said my personal preferences i think i would rather have the 12.9 inch screen so i'm still kind of debating if i want to try and return this and get that or not but uh, let's get to it so as you can see physically it looks essentially the exact same as a 9.7 inch ipad it's basically a shrunken down 12.9 inch. The button placement and everything is the same. It's got the same smart connector on the bottom. And the um, size is obviously a little bit bigger to make that 10.5 inch screen. So really they did a great job of shrinking the bezels on the side and giving you a little bit more screen real estate. So physically it is a little bit bigger footprint than a 9.7, but not by a whole lot. So. Um, I give Apple kudos on this. I think they did a great job with the design. So it's honestly been a long time since I've really been excited about an upgraded iPad just because they really don't change so much. But with this iteration, I think they nailed it. I mean, I think it's perfect. So let's kind of get to some of the specs. Now this has been out for a little while, so you've probably seen and heard most of the videos that talk about the specs of this thing. but. As you know, there is a 10.5 inch model, which is this one and the 12.9 inch. You can get it in four colors. This one is space gray, but you can get it in gold, rose gold or silver. And uh, you can get this in cellular or not. This happens to be the cellular model. You get your three storage options, 64, 256 and 512. But I think it is a good thing that now the entry level model is 64 gigabytes for a lot of people. I think that would be sufficient. I think 32 is just not enough for last year's model, but 64 is actually a pretty good amount. Um, again, it depends what you do, but I would kind of go for the sweet spot and get the 256 in the middle. That's just me. Um, the 512 is a lot of storage, but also that one is a lot of money. But the thing that I really kind of like about this the most and noticed again is the display. It is the uh, True Tone display, which I kind of didn't know that I would like it per se or really care about it because you can disable that in settings but having used it now i actually really like it now that i'm used to it and then i go back to something without a true tone display and i'm like huh you can definitely tell the difference but the display is gorgeous it's your retina display it's got i think 264 pixels per square inch yeah 264 ppi um, again it's got this new a10x fusion chip with 64-bit architecture and I'll throw the benchmark scores up for this thing, but just be assured that this thing is a beast. I've already edited a 4K video on it, and actually I'm going to edit this video. So by the time you see this, it will have been edited on the iPad Pro. But I will tell you that last week, the video that I shot, I did a edit with my this Mac right here, which is the 15 inch used Final Cut Pro. I created the exact same project on here using Luma Fusion. I did the export and the iPad Pro was a third of the time. So it was essentially uh, only took a fraction of what it took to export with my uh, maxed out 15 inch MacBook Pro here. So very impressive performance. I mean, I can't say enough. Now as for the camera, um, I'm not going to show you any um, footage or pictures just because that's already out there and if you've own an iPhone 7, it's the exact same camera. It's a 12 megapixel rear and a 7, me yeah, 7 megapixel front facing uh, camera for doing FaceTime and all that. But the rear camera 
it is awesome. I mean, it shoots 4K video, so honestly, a lot of people like to give other folks flack saying, hey, why would you ever want to record video or whatever, use your iPad for pictures? With such a good camera, why would you not, to be honest with you? As long as you're not at a concert doing this and like blocking everybody behind you, I say go for it. I mean, it's a great camera. It'd be a shame not to use it, but for professionals, I see this is a great camera for doing like document scanning or if you're in real estate or something, you want to do a quick video, take a screenshot, ink it up, send it to your clients. I mean, it's perfect for that. So I think that's kind of what they had in mind, maybe for professionals, but it is a great camera. So you'd be kind of stupid not to use it just because of the whole iPad camera stigma. But um, no complaints with the camera. Like I said, this thing shoots 4K video at 30 frames a second. And um, speakers, audio is the same. It's the same four speakers. Great sound. Probably the best sound that you can get on a tablet is with the iPad Pro. I mean, hands down, I, it doesn't matter if you're an Android guy, Apple guy. This currently hardware wise is the best tablet on the market right now. This is by far the king of the tablets. I mean, if you're going to talk benchmarks, then this thing will destroy any other tablet out there. It doesn't matter if it's Samsung or what. Now, a lot of people want to compare these to the Microsoft Surface Pro. And to me, that's kind of a stupid comparison in the sense that this is a tablet. The Surface Pro is a laptop. I know they initially tried to advertise it as a tablet that can replace your laptop, but really it's a laptop that can kind of replace your tablet. So you're comparing Intel versus, you know, a mobile CPU. So really no comparison, but at the same time, this thing has got some power. So if you want to do benchmarks head to head against the Surface Pro, this thing will probably hold its own to be honest with you. But all right. So touch ID, this has got the new, the uh, second gen touch ID. So honestly, I had the 12.9 inch first gen had touch ID and I, I guess there's a little difference, but it's, it's so fast that it's kind of like you really don't notice, but it does have the newest touch ID on this. Now, as far as battery, they say 10 hours for the Wi-Fi model and nine hours for the cellular model. That's unless you obviously turn off the cellular antenna then you'll probably get that extra hour, but battery life, it's your typical iPad battery life. It's really no change. I've never had any issues with battery life on an iPad. I've never been able to get the 10 hours that they claim, but I've never not made it through a day on battery. So battery is awesome. I mean, it's your typical iPad battery life. So no issues whatsoever. But on this, I actually went ahead and installed the um, iOS 11 beta. Still a little buggy. I plan on doing a complete video on that, but I will say that once the iOS 11 hits the streets, it's fully baked. It is awesome. I mean, it's adds some pretty good functionality to this, but in a few things, I think it went backwards, which I'll talk about in a later video. But all, overall though, iOS 11 is gonna uh, be pretty good. And I think if you have an iPad, you'll definitely wanna upgrade to iOS 11 and you'll be happy with it. So now moving to the other big feature, again, talking about the screen is the, now it says it's got a 120 Hertz refresh rate as opposed to the 60. Now the iPad is smart enough to know that, Hey, if I don't need the 120 Hertz, it's not going to use it to save battery, but for like gaming and some other intensive tasks, you can actually get a 120 Hertz refresh rate, which is pretty crazy to have that on a tablet. And it really shines with the Apple pencil. So with the Apple pencil, there is no perceivable lag. I mean, the human eye just can't catch it. And there's been slow-mo videos going out there showing it and even slow motion, it's hard to detect it. So it really did improve the Apple Pencil, which was already excellent in my opinion. My only gripe about the Apple Pencil is just there's not enough friction. So I always, on my iPad Pro models, have put a matte screen protector just to give it that extra kind of tooth, that extra friction. And it also helps with glare and fingerprints because I just, it annoys me when I see all the fingerprints. But overall, the experience with this has been phenomenal. Um, I'm most likely going to keep it. If I were to exchange, it would be just to get the 12.9 inch model. But again, I've got my 15 inch max. So do I need two giant devices? So that's kind of why I'm sticking with this for the portability, but at the same time, I'm mauling it over. But the big question, I guess, to summarize this video is, 
can this replace your laptop? And I will say for 99% of the people, it definitely can. And again, everybody's case is different, but for your average person, even someone who likes to do a lot of video editing, this will 100% replace your laptop. I mean, LumaFusion, you can check out my videos on that. It is a phenomenal video editing app. I'm probably gonna try and do a couple more videos on it, but let's just say for productivity, this thing is awesome. And like I said, I don't see why this really cannot replace your laptop unless you're doing something very niche. But um, at the same time, if you've got a desktop at home for your heavy stuff, just use this in lieu of your laptop and you go out and I think you will be good to go. But I think Apple's come a long way with the iPad and I think this is definitely the best iteration yet. So I would hands down recommend this. So if you're coming from the 9.7 iPad Pro, or the 12.9 first gen. Uh, I don't know if, unless you got the money, that it's necessarily worth the jump. But at the same time, if you're coming from any iPads older than that, like an iPad Air 2, iPad Air 1, then this thing is definitely worth the upgrade. So, with that, hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. This was not a super in depth as far as techie type video. This is just my thoughts on this, and I will say that I love it. It is an awesome tablet. So, if you've got specific questions, shoot them down in the comments below, and I will do my best to answer them. And if you like this video, go ahead and help me out by giving me a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, please go and do so.